Hey gang, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be rekeying a door lock for a friend of mine. He doesn't want to have two keys to open two different locks. So what I'm going to do is take the key from this lock right here, and I'm going to match it to the deadbolt on another exterior door. What I'm about to show you can come in very handy if you purchase a home that has a high quality pin tumbler lock, such as a Baldwin, and you don't want to throw it away. In order to have a different key, open the door. This video does not pertain to very high security deadbolts like this Medico you see right here. I do show in another video how you can duplicate any key, including one for this Medico. The link to that video has been placed in the video description area, so be sure to check it out after watching this video. This is the deadbolt here that I'm going to be removing from the door so I can rekey it to match the other lock that I just showed you. Okay, let me remove this deadbolt, then I'll be right back. Okay, the deadbolt's been removed from the door. It consists of two keyholes, one here and one on the opposite side because there is glass located near the door. In case somebody breaks it, they just can't reach around through the glass to turn a latch and open the door. So for this demonstration, I'm only going to demonstrate on one side, and then when I'm done with the video, I'll finish the other one over there. So let me start by taking this one apart. Show you what to do. Let me lift this off. Now this is the cylinder with the pins. Now what we're going to do Right over here is a little tiny pin. Hopefully you can see it right there in front of my fingernail. I'm going to push that down with a very tiny screwdriver and I'm going to unscrew this all the way until it comes off the end. This piece will come off, the pin will pop out, and then this piece right here that engages the lock, all three will come off. Ideally, you would use a smaller slot screwdriver like this. Okay, lift this off. Take this off. And we're going to move that over to there. This is the key that opens the lock. And I want to change it to this one here, the blue one. So first, let me just show you. So you just hold the back, so when I take the key out, it doesn't slide out. So that one is the one that works the lock. And this one here does absolutely nothing. So we're going to be changing it to this key right here. Now in order to remove the core or the cylinder, you have to put the key inside the lock. So I'm going to take this one right here, insert it. Now, And also one thing to note, some locks will have a retaining ring. You're going to need retaining pliers to get this end to come undone. So when you rotate the key, you'll be able to slide it out. This one here, you just simply remove this cap. So now that I rotated the key, you're going to hold your hand over the end because all the pins are going to want to fly out. Go easy, just pull it out. Okay. So all the top pins, see them right there, you have five top pins and you have five springs and then over here you can see that when the key is inserted it creates a shear line perfectly flush to allow that cylinder to rotate. It's very simple how the lock works. Now if we install the other key you're going to observe that they're all the wrong height, you see? This one sticks up too much, this one goes down too low, so the top pin's gonna go into that hole, top pin into that hole. So what I need to do is change all these pins so that when this key is inserted, it looks exactly like the original key right there, nice and flush. Now the most common pins that you're going to use are Quickset and Schlage. Both of them are used in many different types of locks, different brands. And over the years, what I did is I accumulated a whole bunch of pin tumblers and springs by taking them from old locks. And by doing that, I'm now able to rekey any lock that I have. There's a whole bunch of pins inside there. So let me get started. Let's take this one out. And it's just a matter of finding the correct size pin that's going to make these all flush. 
I have a Dremel, and if I don't find one that's shorter than this one, I can also cut this down to size to make it flush using a cutoff wheel, and that also works well. So let me see if I can find the correct pins to put in here, and I'll come back and I will show you. Okay, what I did is I went through all these pins. I have top pins and I have bottom pins, or upper pins and the lower pins, and I tried each one until I found one that matched the new key. This is the blue key now. It's wearing off my finger. The blue is the new one. And you can see all these pins go perfectly flush. And when I take the old key, the red one, a little bit of red left right there, you can see it. Now you can see this would never rotate with these pins sticking up. Very simple to do. Now I'm going to reinsert this into the lock, right over here. Now once this is inserted back into the lock, you have two options to reinstall the springs and the top pins. You can slide this piece off, sometimes it could be a pain in the neck, to slide it off this rail. And when you slide it off that rail, you're going to have the five openings. You drop each one of these upper pins into the holes, then you're going to put the springs on top of the pins, and then you're going to put this piece back on top. When that's done, the lock will work, or you could do it a different way. In this case, this is really tight on here. So what I do, let me just make sure the pins are on the right side, there they are. All right, I'm going to slide that out, right there, all right. So you slide it out just a little bit. You see this is on the top of the pins. Flip it around like this, just lay it down, you don't want to drop all the pins out. Once that core is slid out, you can see each one of the openings, five of them, using either a screwdriver that's tiny, or you can use a hemostat like this. Just grab the springs, and then one at a time, insert them into the opening, something like that. I'm taking the blade, trying to insert it into the spring. All right, I'm going to go to the next one. All right, you see two. So I'm going to do all five of them, and then when they're done, I'll come right back. Okay, if you look inside, you can see all five springs are now lined up. Now, this is a little more difficult. Let me move these over here first. These are the lower pins that we replaced. Don't need those anymore. And over here are the top pins right there. So the way to do it without taking the cap off, here you can see all the pins lined up on top and all the springs are located on the bottom. I already inserted two of the upper pins and you're going to drop them in there and you're going to take this small screwdriver, you're going to push it down into position and then when it's pushed all the way down you're going to slide this cylinder forward like that and it's going to lock that pin. Once that's locked, you take the other pin, put it right here, push down, and then you slide it forward again. You do that until you get every single one of them done. Let me do a couple more and then at the very end when I get to these two, I'll show you how it's done. Okay, just down to the last two now. I'm just going to drop that in and not easy on film, but push it down. See? Slide it forward. And that one's in. Take the next pin, drop it in. Go a little bit more. Oh. Just get it to the right position. There it go. Oh. Get it to the right position and then slide it. Done, baby. So that's it. It's all back together, and once that's finished, I can now take the end, put the spring back in the little hole, take the pin, put the pin there, put this on the end, and then screw on the cap. You want to make sure the cap is tight, but not tight enough that the cylinder can't rotate. Now, if I wanted to make this more pick resistant, I could have installed right over here what are called pick resistant pins. And you can see it right there. They look like a barbell. 
And what happens when you try and pick the lock, they get hung up. The only way to pick these easily is you would push all the pins up into the lock, you bind the lock with some tension, and then you rake it from the top down, and that's how I normally pick these. But these make it much harder to pick the lock. So I may even throw one in just to make it a little harder to pick this lock. All right, now that the pins are all in position, let me put the spring back in, right there. Take this, put this in, reinstall this. All right. This in. Slide this over and start tightening it down. Make sure that's in. See the pin is stopping it now? So now I'm going to do push it down and tighten this all the way down. Let me go all the way down off camera so I can see what I'm doing and I'll be right back. When you reinstall this, tighten it as far as you can tighten it and then you're going to back off one or two spaces so it doesn't bind the lock. So I'm just going to back off just one notch here, two from this side. That's it. All right. This key works fine. And this is the original one that I changed. No longer works. Okay, let me rekey the other side and put it back together. Okay, this is the original key for this deadbolt. No longer works. And this is the blue key right here. Insert that. And you can see it works perfectly. Door is locked and the door is open. And here's the same key, the blue one, that worked on this lock right here. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well.